Good evening. I'm going to call this meeting to order. Uh, I'm Vice Chair Tyler Rogers stepping in for Christine, who is uh, at home. Uh, Christine, you want to say hi? Make sure we can hear you. Hi, everybody. Sorry to be joining virtually. The, um, the virus officially hit my house on Tuesday, so staying home and staying safe here. Thanks for taking over for me, Tyler. Absolutely. We got to do what we have to do this time of uh, of life. So absolutely, thank you. Absolutely. Uh, so moving past item one dot one to roll call one dot two, I will do that. Uh, going down the list here, looks like it's in alphabetical order. Polly Boardman. Present. Kaylin Campbell. Okay, it's all good. Absent. Christine Dehan. Present. Christy Essa. Here. Darren Fleck, and we'll come back and introduce you. Present. Natalie Geisels. Absent. Amy Howe. Present. Christine Hull. Present. Araceli Martinez. Absent. Adriana Publico. Present. Tyler Rogers, present. Lauren Rushing. Present. Brooke Snyder. Present. Looks like we have a quorum. Um, we have a new member uh, on the committee uh, representing as a joining as a teacher, Darren Fleck. Would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Darren. Uh, I've been with the district 23 years. I'm in Dodd Middle School for 20 years, and I have two little kiddos in the district, so I'm happy to help out. Thank you. Pleasure to have you. Thank you for joining. Um, that brings us to the core of the agenda. I'd also would like to recognize that uh, tonight we're joined by Trustee Mayberry, uh, as well as Area Superintendent Dixon. So thank you both for joining this evening. Um, so let's move into the, the core of the agenda. Uh, item 2.01, approval of the minutes of November 18th, 2021, meeting of the Zoning Advisory Committee for possible action. Uh, does anyone want to make a motion uh, to approve those minutes? Lauren Rushing, motion to approve. Polly Boardman, second. Sorry, who, ha who has the second? Polly Boardman. All right, uh, so we have a motion on the floor to approve the minutes with a, a, a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. The meeting minutes are approved. Uh, that brings us to the next items on the agenda. Uh, I'd like to propose actually flipping uh, the agenda items and starting with item 2.03, which is for information discussion only, uh, and coming back and sort of using 2.02 .02 for later in the meeting, uh, which is I think the core of what we wanna chat through tonight, but just wanna sort of get the information session out of the way. Um, I will read that in a second, but just a reminder too to the, the members of the public that have joined. If you would like to speak this evening, there are blue cards. I think that they should be by the door. Uh, if you want to speak, you need to fill out one of those and then give it to the friends uh, sitting by the windows over here. And then we'll read through for public comment. So just a reminder, that's the process for that. Uh, so item 2.03, uh, information and discussion on the possible attendance zone changes to the following schools in the South Meadows area of Washoe County as a result of current and projected enrollment growth along the Veterans Parkway corridor and associated with the Daybreak Talis Valley development. Those schools include Double Diamond Elementary School, Nick Polakitis Elementary School, Donner Springs Elementary School, Hidden Valley Elementary School, Edward Pine Middle School, Kindle DePulley Middle School, or Wilster High School, and DeMonte Ranch High School. Again, this is for information and discussion only. And our plan is to get this information and then move back to section or item 2.02. .02. Um, so with that, uh, I'm going to hand it over to Adam from the Washington County School District to walk us through that part of the presentation. Thank you, Tyler. Uh, for the record, everybody, good evening. My name is Adam Searcy. I'm the Chief Facilities Officer for the School District. I appreciate the resequencing here. This item, this information is for information and discussion only, but it does interact with some of the other schools on uh, the previous items. So 
this should be helpful. This is largely regarding the Daybreak slash now known as Talus Valley development. This is a major residential project that has been approved essentially from Salt Meadows Parkway all the way up to Pembroke. We'll go into it in detail. There are no students living in this area currently and there are no uh, immediate uh, you know, construction taking place out there. So basically because we were going to be talking about these schools, Polakitas and others, um, and because it's a lot easier to talk about realigning these zoning boundaries before students live there, we wanted to bring this up to the committee for the first time here tonight. So that's why it's not agendized for action. Um, this slide 12 on the slide deck just you know, kind of gives a disclaimer about the fact that uh, what I just said and that uh, this would only affect future students who choose to reside in this development. All right, so slide 13 here tries to begin sort of an orientation. We've got our existing schools starred to give you initial bearings here, Dipoli, Polakitis, where we are tonight, Hidden Valley, Donner Springs, Dodson. For those of you that maybe aren't as familiar with our presentation format, these blue lines represent the existing elementary school boundaries. The colors represent existing middle school boundaries. So all of this turquoise is currently zoned to Pine Middle School. All of this, you know, dark tan and orange is zoned for Dipoli, et cetera. And these darker gold lines are the high school boundaries. So Wooster, Damani Ranch really is what's depicted here. The area shaded in yellow is essentially the extents of this development in question. And so you can see the existing boundaries really meander irrationally through this pasture land right now. So again, this is more of a, a cleanup. This is sort of arbitrary lines drawn decades ago across uninhabited area. And this is our opportunity now that we know that this development will be proceeding uh, to square up these lines more appropriately with what's proposed before people actually live there. So again, just a lot of orientation right now for those who maybe aren't as familiar with what's been proposed. This is the same exact area just with an aerial image. So again, for your bearings, this is Dipoli Middle School, Polakitis. We've got Donner Springs right here. This is your Alexander Lake Road. Most of you are familiar with Veterans Parkway and that bridge that you kind of go from the south to the north. So you'll see all this green pasture surrounding Donner Springs. This is all going to be a residential development. And then you're all familiar with the pasture and some of this uh, disturbed area on the east side of Steamboat Creek alongside Veterans Parkway. All of that also is gonna be a part of this daybreak development. Again, just some context and some orientation for everybody following along. Okay, so this slide, I'm gonna have to try and figure out a full screen here. But this is a schematic land plan of the proposed daybreak development. I'm gonna spend a little bit of time here. Hopefully everybody's now in sync with Donner Springs Elementary, DePoli Middle, Polakitas Elementary, et cetera. We've got Veterans Parkway running north-south through the entire development. And we'll start down here in the southeast quadrant. Uh, Rio Wrangler Parkway, currently dead ends, is going to be extended all the way up to this point, and a bridge will connect South Meadows Parkway across Steamboat Creek, and Rio Wrangler Parkway will be extended all the way up to what's now a public rock quarry, basically, on the east side of Steamboat Creek. Some great hiking and all, all sorts of stuff up there. All of this area will be developed into what we're going to call Rio Wrangler East, for the purposes of this presentation, um, several hundred res single family residential units proposed uh, in Rio Wrangler East. So circling around clockwise, we're gonna call this area town center. 
And this has a variety of components, multifamily, light commercial, parks, single family, et cetera. But again, several hundred residential units um, in this area. This, I forget the name of this road, they're going to uh, construct uh, to connect down just to the west of, or the east of DePoli to South Meadows Parkway. There's also an at-grade intersection with Veterans Parkway proposed here, and this is gonna be a roundabout. So these, get, these folks will have an opportunity to get on at a signal, signalized intersection at Veterans Parkway here, or go south to Ste uh, South Meadows Parkway and go east or west. In this area, and we'll talk more about this later, there is master planned to be a new elementary school when and if needed. We'll talk about that more later, but this has long been planned between the school district and the developer. Um, none of this is finalized. We don't have a formal agreement. The school district doesn't own this property, but it very much has been part of this master plan um, the entire time. So continuing on to the north, this area, uh, we're going to refer to as Alexander Lake Quarry. Again, this is an active quarry here. Um, this is a private, privately owned property. Um, they're going to basically mine that for the purposes of developing the rest of this uh, project. And ultimately, this will be residential units as well. We'll call this Alexander Lake Quarry. And this area uh, is a master plan to be a future new high school. Now, that's quite a bit further into the future, but it's if you are very familiar with the WC1 ballot measure and the program of projects listed in 2015 and 2016, it actually always referred to a high school in the Wild Creek area, Cold Springs area high school, and a Southeast McCarran slash Butler Ranch area high school. Literally verbatim, that's this. And it may not come to fruition or ever be needed, but it has been master planned into this developer's property. And it is a part of our long-term facility master planning. I just am being completely thorough in my description of what this map is illustrating. Okay, so then traveling north, again, most of you have driven on this road, you know, you go over this bridge and then the meadow opens up quickly on the north side of this mountain. And all of this pasture is proposed to be developed with residential units as well. So here you'll see an at-grade signalized intersection proposed in the outer years on Veterans Parkway, a roundabout helping this community navigate, but uh, only limited connectivity kind of from the north to the south along a roadway, sort of a surface roadway outside of Veterans Parkway. But most of these neighborhoods are going to connect out through uh, Rio Poco Road, I believe it's called, uh, right past Donner Springs Elementary School. So we're going to call these areas Rio Poco North, Rio Wrangler East, Town Center, Alexander Lake Quarry. If those terms will come up uh, later. There will be a, there's not a test tonight. This is just practice. We're going to look at that map quite a few times. So from a high level, we're going to talk again, these four big bucket areas. The current zoning, you know, is far less relevant. I don't want you to get confused about where these guys are zoned right now, because honestly, they're not really pertinent to this development. That's technically where those areas are zoned for, but there wasn't logic behind it when they were drawn. What we want to focus your attention on is the proposed school zoning. So Rio Poco North up here, completely surrounding, literally adjacent to Donner Springs Elementary School, relatively poor access to the north. Um, it, it really screams to be zoned for Donner Springs Elementary School. So anyway, Donner Springs Elementary School is where we're going to be proposing that Rio Poco North to be zoned for. And then just falling in sync with that vertical, Donner Springs is currently zoned for Pine and DeMonte Ranch High School as an elementary school vertical matriculation. So we would follow suit for Rio Poco North. 
Reversing course counterclockwise back around. We'll talk about Alexander Valley Quarry, Alexander Lake Quarry, rather. And this neighborhood is proposed to have a residential road up to the north and a residential road down to the south. So this one's obviously on the bubble, you know, in between. Um, so we went back and forth on this one. Ultimately tonight, we're recommending that the enrollment boundary for this area of daybreak be drawn such that they would be zoned for Donner Springs Elementary. And we'll look at the capacities and some of the other reasonings behind that. Again, they're, they're as the crow flies, a little closer to Donner Springs than uh, Double Diamond Elementary, roadway connectivity, roughly equivalent, and then we'll look at the capacity later. So this one, and we went back and forth with, but tonight we're talking about Alexander Lake Quarry area going to Donner Springs. And then again, following up through Pine and Demonte Ranch High School. Okay, so on this view, you can kind of see the southern half here. Town center right here, all of this area, they come down to uh, South Meadows Parkway. This is veterans over here. They come down to South Meadows Parkway and we're gonna be talking about them being incorporated into Double Diamond Elementary School zone. So that's right here. Double Diamond matriculates up through DePoli Middle and Demonte Ranch High School. So they would follow suit as well. Again, lots of different ways to go about this, but that's, we think the simplest and, and best recommendation here tonight. So we'll continue on with Rio Wrangler East now we're talking about the east side of Steamboat Creek. They'll have access to the south on Rio Wrangler Parkway. Once it's extended, and they'll have access to the west on South Meadows Parkway. But this area we felt was rather obvious to be zoned for Polakitas. And so you'll see that recommendation here. And of course, Polakitas matriculates up through DePoli and Demonte Ranch, so we'd follow suit there. So this hopefully is starting to come into focus for everybody. We'll continue on. We'll start looking at some of these maps again. So this is, we saw this uh, one before. These are the existing zones that don't have a lot of rhyme or reason before them. But this is what the zoning map would look like based on the scenarios that I just walked us through. So this dark gold line, you can see all of this area all in here is daybreak and all of it even on the other side of the creek over here all of it would be zoned for demonte ranch high school everything that is zoned for donner springs elementary would encompass the quarry that's right about in here and of course this rio poco north right around Donner Springs. So this this would be the line between Donner Springs and uh, in this instance, Double Diamond. So all of these guys would go to Donner Springs and then Pine in the Turquoise and then Demonte Ranch High School. This area right here is town center. And so this is the current elementary school boundary between Double Diamond and Polakitas. And we would bend it down South Meadows Parkway and up Veterans Parkway to grab all of Town Center and zone them into Double Diamond. And then lastly, all of Rio Wrangler East would go into Polakitas. Both of those elementaries matriculate up through DePoli and DeMonte now, and that would remain. So this line, this line isn't very smooth, but it's intended to follow these proposed streets to catch, you know, it follows these big parcel lines, and then it follows this residential line, grabbing Town Center and taking them up to Donner Springs, or pardon me, Alexander Lake Quarry area, taking them up to Donner Springs, and then Town Center to Double Diamond. 
that's this map. This is a, this is what the proposed zoning would look like on a map. All right, this one was just a placeholder in to to reorient everybody, right? We this one's a little bit hard to see without the existing roads, with no existing roads. So I'm really trying to use my cursor to keep everybody's bearings. But I wanted to have this slide again, just it's nice to have them right next to each other to flip back and forth to keep your bearings a little bit. All right. So this last slide is a slightly different format than what you're used to seeing uh, with our more colored year by year projections. Again, this is a project that has been approved. It's in the final stages of tentative map and final map approvals. They have years of construction before anybody's even going to be living there and many, many years of construction before a meaningful amount of students are gonna be living there. But it is a certainty. It's just a matter of how much time it actually takes. Probably by 2024, you'll start seeing, you know, a significant number of residents living in these communities. So what these slides represent, of course, you see all the schools that are technically impacted by these changes. They're uh, rated maximum enrollment capacities and their projected enrollments and utilization percentages in 10 years from now, based on the assumption that we make the minor adjustments to Polakitis in particular that are proposed here uh, later tonight. So with that in mind, then we're talking about what the projected utilization and enrollments for these schools will look like without any changes to the enrollment or to the zoning boundaries. Basically, with no change, we're going to see numbers that look like this. If we add in daybreak in this manner, so all these acronyms, plus and minus, hopefully you can follow, but Donner Springs, we talked about Rio Poco North and Alexander Lake Quarry. Those two areas get zoned for Donner Springs. You add them in, and instead of pegging a date on build out, we just went ahead and said, at some point in time in the future, you know these developments can take much longer than maybe what they originally forecast. So rather than saying by 2035, these are all gonna be built, we're just assuming every single one of them is built. And when that occurs, this is where we're projecting the enrollment and utilization percentage based on these neighborhoods being zoned for this school. So when these neighborhoods are fully built out and zoned for Donner Springs, this is where we think it'll end up. Okay, so following down, you can see Double Diamond taking on all of Town Center, like we talked about, and this is where they'll be at full build out. Similarly with Polakitis, Rio Wrangler East, all of it to Polakitis, up right at near 100% capacity. Lower impacts on the middles and highs. You can see all of the areas going to Damani Ranch. And currently, much of the areas are zoned for Hidden Valley and Wooster. There's nobody living there now. So it's really uh, not a big net negative impact to those schools one way or the other. But these that this is where those numbers are projected to fall at full build out. Now, taking a moment to note those elementaries in particular, as we mentioned early on, we have a proposed elementary school within the daybreak development. A lot can change in 10 years, much less 20, when this is actually likely to be fully built out. We'll have ample opportunity to reassess these choices and make slightly more precise decisions based on new information and have a conversation about the timing of a new elementary school and any associated enrollment or uh, zoning changes that that go along with that similarly with the high school there's a high school master plan within this community whether we find ourselves having a conversation about high school rezoning at some time in the 2030s or if we have our find ourselves having a conversation about the construction of a new high school somewhere in this development in the 2030s remains to be seen. But for all the reasons that we walked through so far this evening, 
we feel that the most logical way to adjust the enrollment boundaries today in anticipation of the development as it's imminently proposed is, as I just described, simplistically Rio Wrangler East to Polakitas, Town Center to Double Diamond, Alexander Lake Quarry to Donner Springs, and Rio Poco North to Donner Springs. And then of course, aligning all those verticals with their currently their current alignments. So I think that's kind of the, the summary on Daybreak. I know this is new content, a little bit different format, maybe a lot to take in. That's definitely why it's for information and discussion. But we thought while we were in the neighborhood, we should uh, break the ice on this one. That's all I have. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Adam. Uh, at this point, we will take questions or comments from the committee. Does anyone have questions or discussion items of Adam? Adriana Publico for the record. So it sounds like, Adam, uh, we're pretty far out on the buildings. I mean, the residential construction. And then after that, there will be an elementary school built. And we'd have to zone that school later on. So what's the benefit of zoning these areas now if we know we're going to have to rezone when that new school is closer to being built? So I think to answer that one, I'll go back to the existing enrollment boundary map that really shows, like, for example, this would be the Rio Wrangler East area would be split between Polakitas and and uh, in this case, Hidden Valley, um, which really doesn't make sense with all the proposed developments. So, you know, there's definitely some adjustments that need to be made to the current enrollment boundaries to uh, match the proposed development. And that's where we think we can make some adjustments now that will likely serve us well through the end of this decade. And then we'll know more precisely how the numbers are actually developing and on what time pace, whether we're talking about a new elementary school or if we need to make some adjustments to the enrollment boundaries before we're ready to build the elementary school. That is a decade away. And we think these adjustments are, are sound and better made now before um, anybody lives there. And, and that the way that they're split through the neighborhoods, it, it really warrants some adjustments before the construction begins. This is Christy Essa for the record. I was just, I'm, I'm looking at these numbers and I'm a little concerned that you've got Depolian, Pine, and Wooster are all at the mid 60s and 50%. And then Double Diamond, Polakitas, and Damonte Ranch are all in the 90s. It just seems like an odd utilization of space to really kind of make, <coughs> sorry, Double Diamond, Polakitas, and Damonte Ranch burden that much populace and not spread it around the Wooster High and some of the other ones that are in the 50s and 60s. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we'll look at slide 18. Part of the response to, to your comment, I think might be the proposed future additional elementary school as well as a proposed future high school, um, you know, with the caveat that these questions and these numbers are a full decade away from fruition. So there's a significant margin of error here, but this is, this is a problem. This is a forecast, whether we build a new school to relieve these or whether in the future, there's a conversation about perhaps a Donner Springs rezone to a Wooster. Um, this committee has considered that a couple of years ago and ultimately uh, elected to keep them at Damani Ranch. That, that, that could be revisited in, in years to come as information warrants. Um, you know, DePoli and Pine being the middle schools, those are relatively well balanced. And I think you'd find uh, Marcy Hers is actually in a similar level of utilization. Um, but yeah, these, these elementary schools, we think we tried to move them geographically where it makes the most sense. And certainly it does create a little bit more enrollment pressure at Damani Ranch, or pardon me, Double Diamond and Polakitas. Um, 
and I think that's just something that this committee and, and the facilities department would keep a close eye on in years to come. Adam Tyler Rogers for the record. Um, following up from that, south of this area, is there still a fair amount of potential development area, I, I would think? Is, are you aware of any sort of housing developments that would feed into these other elementary schools like Polkitas or Dipoli or, or Double Diamond that would put further pressure on those that were just like, we're thinking of the north, but I'm, I'm, I'm still thinking of the southern part of those districts. Yeah, you bet. I mean, really, the rest of Damani Ranch, southeast Reno, South Meadows, nearing full build out, um, there's certainly active development. The punchline really is that those developments are known and they are actually incorporated into these numbers here, both in the pre daybreak sort of column here, they're incorporated into these numbers. And then of course, daybreak added on top of those numbers. So there will be continued growth in the Southeast Reno area, South Meadows, it's lessening in pace. And those numbers are incorporated into these projections. Thanks. And one follow up, can you expand it a little bit more on like what would trigger the elementary school to be built? And like, are there, is there some contingency with the developer? Or like what, 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 what it was the process that would actually trigger that to happen? So as far as the school district's relationship with the developer at this point, there's nothing in contractually binding. It's all been a series of meetings and master plan exhibits and things of that nature. So um, while this is a very public project that has a, a, a lot of, uh, you know, commitments on the record, we don't have ownership of that property, things like that. When it, it does come to that point, we will likely enter into some form of agreement that gives mutual flexibility. At some point in time, the developer is going to basically put us on the clock. This is similar to the agreement that we do have executed with in North Valley's Cold Springs with the uh, Stonegate. So at some point in time, they're moving forward with the development of the nearby property. They need us to make a commitment. If we choose to opt out of it, they'll redevelop that property in some form or fashion. So we will likely execute an agreement with mutual flexibility along those lines. That will come likely quite a few years in advance of the actual decision point for the school. At that point, Assuming that we have executed that agreement, we do basically have that uh, piece of property available to us. We're evaluating the numbers. We're looking at rezoning opportunities. We're evaluating all the tools in our toolbox, including portable classrooms, things of that nature. And then going through a similar process to what we went through for this Rio Wrangler area elementary school, you know, is it time? And then yes, let's build a new elementary school and then here we are just like tonight. So not an exact process, but that's that's how it will play. It's helpful to know it's also like, it's not in a firm agreement or any sort of contract with the developer. It's, it's... That's correct. Yep. We don't have a contract with the developer. Um, you know, they have approved tentative maps for this development, but a lot can change. Yep, for sure. A lot can change. But this is this is sufficiently imminent that it's appropriate to be having these conversations. Thank you. Other questions? Jeff? I have one. Amy Howe, for the record. I'm just curious at what point do you start looking at rezoning to like Dodson and Hidden Valley where their enrollment is low? And if you're going to start, because I know that they were on that first map, you, you could see them on there because they're a little bit north of Donner Springs. But I was just curious when that enters the conversation. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and I, I think, you know, just staying focused on this development, this map, and when you really look closely at how these roadways interconnect or don't interconnect with the community, this being Donner Springs Elementary, it was really hard for us to envision a scenario where these neighborhoods, these houses are not zoned for Donner Springs. But you are correct that the enrollment currently at Dodson and Hidden Valley is underutilized. 
and we're analyzing, we're looking at that at the staff level. And I wouldn't be surprised if, if, um, you know, that gets brought back to the zoning advisory committee for consideration on how we might adjust these boundaries to better utilize those facilities. At this point, we really didn't see an opportunity that felt right to take this neighborhood and perhaps keep them or zone them into Hidden Valley versus Donner Springs. But Hidden Valley and Dodson are some schools that uh, are underutilized right now. I just don't believe that Daybreak is going to contribute to their enrollment. Yeah, I don't think so either. But I was just curious if you're looking at building a new school down in Daybreak, if you would ever consider rezoning like Donner Springs and adjust north. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I mean, th that would be part of the process. You know, if we got to the point where, say, for example, Polakitis and, and Double Diamond were nearing capacity and we're having a conversation about should we build a new school or should we do some sort of rezone adjustment where we take some of that capacity in Hidden Valley and Dodson and sort of spread it to the south a little bit. It would be a little bit tricky just geographically, but I think we would go through that exercise before we made the decision to open a new school. Thank you. Great point. Thank you. Darren Fleck for the record. <clears throat> I just had a uh, question about Wooster and the district's intentions with what is happening with HUG and any aspects that might go with this. Considering Donner Springs with an elementary school, would you have, would you be splitting kids out of Donner Springs or would they all be going to Damani? And in that case, I would see Donner Springs as being a split community, old, old homes, old school, new homes, new school coming out of a, the same community. And I just was wondering what you had plans for Wooster or anything that would lead to keeping it at in the 50s percentage wise. Yeah, Wooster's another uh, one that we've got our eye on. I mean, as far as the Donner Springs community talking about existing versus new, um, the way this has been developed, the where Donner Springs is relative to where this development is going to play out, you know, I really think that's just going to be an interesting uh, case study of how that community is going to grow together because uh, I really am doubtful that there's going to be a dramatically different way to rezone that elementary school. Um, but it, uh, that will make for uh, some interesting uh, future growth. Wooster is certainly a legacy uh, school that's about the same age as Hug High School. It's absolutely our intention to maintain it as a comprehensive high school, essentially in its current form and fashion. Um, I'm very optimistic that through our capital improvements program that we're going to be able to make tremendous investments into Wooster High School to keep it up, to modernize it, things of that nature. But there is no plans to redevelop it in a comprehensive way, the way that we are uh, pursuing H the current Hug High School today. But that enrollment number is of somewhat concern. It does present an opportunity. I think we talked about before for a hypothetical move of Donner Springs from Damani Ranch to Wooster. It's been discussed before. It could be discussed again. There's some pros and cons to it. Numerically, it might uh, make sense in the future. Um, I think I think that's that's kind of what the future might hold. But no, Wooster's not going anywhere. And just as a quick follow up, uh, m mentioning talking about North and South Damani Ranch, in tying with looking at the enrollment numbers at Galena as well and Wooster and trying to see a bigger picture when we look at these maps about what you could actually do to try to balance this so we don't have trailers at Damani Ranch and empty classrooms at Wooster and Galena is something I think would help. 
all very good points. We're, you know, we're going to be talking about that even a little bit more later this evening, I think. And uh, welcome to the Zoning Advisory Committee, because <laughs> these are the fun puzzles that we get to wrestle with all throughout the Truckee Meadows. Any other questions from the committee? I'd like to just call one thing. I, th I think I talked about this with with Lauren offline, but I want to call it out of, of like future meetings where we look at this data. Adam, I think there's like a great job of covering a lot of the key points. But as I've been learning sort of the, the board and the governance over us, I've been looking at the, at the paperwork, at the board policy. Um, it's specifically the section that is over over zoning. It's administrative regulation 7107. Within that, there are factors that we're supposed to sort of look at consider and look at this stuff through a lens i think you cover a lot of them but within section 3d mostly just for the record there's uh six parameters and i think it would be great if as you're presenting these in the future if we could somehow score them against those parameters um it would be helpful i think just data for us as we're looking at all this so something for your consideration um when we look at these pr proposals going forward any concerns with that from the committee you want to read them? sure i'm happy to read it since i have it in front of me uh, section 3D, several factors may be considered when realigning school attendance zones. Such considerations shall include, but not necessarily be limited to, one, proximity of students to an individual school, two, safety of students, three, availability of space, four, transportation, five, growth impact as determined by the number and location of approved but unbuilt subdivisions, and six, capacity enrollment of schools to be rezoned as well as surrounding schools. And again, I think you cover a lot of these, but we could centralize in some way I don't I think I'm an analytical brain so like some sort of assessment against your proposals of those items I think would be helpful to me I don't know if anyone would agree or disagree with that on the committee I agree I think it would be useful and I think some of those priorities are conflicting when we're looking at different options so um, I think it would be helpful to be able to weigh those against each other safety being most important <laughs> Cool. I think at this point, uh, we're going to open it up to public comment specifically on this agenda item. Again, we'll have public comment for item 2.02 following that presentation. Um, but do we have any public comment specifically to agenda item 2.03, the Daybreak Talos Valley development? Pablo Nava Duran. Good afternoon. Uh, so I heard talk about the daybreak development for having CC with only now and then later that the good plan so the mini family could move there. Or if, uh, if not, the the community while we're here at Wingman East uh, Town Center will be split. So so I, I like the Royal Poco North we zone to Donald Stream, which is good. Good. We're aligned with Pine or Damani Ranch High School, or maybe Wusa High School in the future. But for answer, Valley Curly, I think the I think the uh, Don Smith Pine or Damani Ranch High School sound like a little bit sense since uh, since this one always done for the Don Smith Pine and Damani Ranch, so we could stay that way, or maybe. Maybe stay uh, stay uh, in. I think the best way to stay with uh, the Highland uh, Center Valley Curly to be in Valley Pine Wooster. So because of Wooster, Patasa is on a urinite. So I think this is the best way. So the town center, I thought that you spread out the neighborhood, but no, it's a development. Okay, so there's like a a neighborhood down here. So thank you, Adam CC, for making sense about the the zoning, what type of zoning it is. So I think this one kind of makes sense to go to the Dominic the Poly because they're walking distance. And then the money ones could be walk distance, so it makes sense. So we rank ease, I think the I think that this one poor kids that makes sense. But since the Hidden Valley was under your I maybe we could rezone the Hidden Valley Pine or Wooster to balance that is. But I don't know about it. So that's in the future meeting. I think the 
And uh, I do know the Hen Valley doesn't, the reason why they are underurinized, I don't know, you know why? Because we, we zone out a newer area from Dawson to go to Kobe and then Smith Race. You talk about like the uh, impact of a uh, impact of Monsters Middle School, and then we zone all the land from uh, I say uh, Indian Colony from a uh, Hen Valley up to Washer COVID. So I mean to avoid spit feeder because Hen Valley go to behind. So here it goes. That's it. Thanks, Pablo. There's no more in person public comment, but the committee received email comment from Rachel Haverly, Kelly Roper, Zachary Slopemaker, Stephanie Crown, and Pablo Nava Duran. Any further discussion from the committee on this? I don't think there's no possible action, so I don't think we need to vote to close it out. So we'll just expect to hear at a future meeting on uh, the proposal and take action on it then. Tyler, yeah. I, got, I have one more. Okay, kind great. Of Should I just go off? Cavender. Andrew Cavender. Hello, uh, I'm Andrew Cavendor. Um, I really like the presentation and how it describes what's going on uh, with the zoning. My question comes down to our current allocation of resources with bus drivers. So I'm assuming there's going to be a variance for the town center area. And uh, my family currently lives over in uh, the Cyan district and we have buses all the times, but there's we all know there's a, a bus shortage bus driver shortage right now. Um, I, I realize this is far into the future, but I see Veterans Highway as like this death trap because people drive so freaking fast all the time and I'm surprised a kid has not perished because of it. Um, frankly, I'm not sure that the solution with the new traffic light is really gonna help out as much as we hope, but um, having a variance with just bus drivers going across veterans. I don't know if there's going to be maybe something like, I don't know, a bridge that the kids can take over instead from that area because um, then they don't have to worry about a bus driver all the time. Um, the, the other aspect, I didn't quite hear all the discussion about it, but connecting Alexander Lake Quarry up to the Rio Poco North, was it confirmed that there's going to be a a road. I don't know if somebody can answer that. What? Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. And otherwise, that's really my only question to you: is what's the plans for getting the kids safely to the like Polakitas and the schools and them in and of themselves? So, thank you. Thank you, Andrew. And I, I think the transportation and safety thing is. Again, why I highlighted it in those sort of those those metrics, and Adam, you should do a good job in these of highlighting that. So maybe we can expect next time some transportation information and safety as part of the next sort of discussion. That sounds great. That's a great addition. Cool. Thank you. All right. Uh, with that, um, close out that item and move to item two point zero two on the agenda. That is discussion and possible action on attendance zone changes to the following schools in the South Meadows area of Washoe County as a result of approval of a new elementary school in the Ringo Wrangler area. Specific schools are Brown Elementary School, Double Diamond Elementary School, and Nick Polakitas Elementary School. And this is an action for possible action. This is an item for possible action. Uh, at this point, I'll hand it back over to Adam to walk through that part of the presentation. All right, thanks again. I'm going to keep calling it the Rio Wrangler Elementary School, Area Elementary School, but for all of you Zoning Advisory Committee members, your uh, cousins are on the Naming Advisory Committee, and they are 
just kicking off the naming for the school. So if anybody in this room is here because they're interested in this school, uh, you should get involved. It's actually kind of fun uh, to nominate and vote and they get a lot of engagement and just really builds enthusiasm. We recently awarded the construction contract. We're likely going to be mobilizing in February and probably having a groundbreaking ceremony this spring. A uh, lot of excitement. And of course, that goes with change and uh, enrollment boundary rezoning. So here we go. The Rio Wrangler Area Elementary School. So slide three is our current zoning configuration. Uh, everybody has their bearings. This is the elementary school property. Again, blue lines are the elementary school boundary. So this is the Polakitas Brown boundary that really kind of zigs and zags right through the, the immediate neighborhood for this new school. Um, we've got the double diamond elementary school zoning boundary that's uh, noteworthy here on this slide. Everybody in the darker orange goes to Depoli. And then this line we're going to talk about quite a bit tonight represents not only the blue in the elementary, the colors change here. So this is the Mason-Dixon line between DePoli and hers and, of course, galena Damonte High School boundary line. We'll talk more about that later. You can see, I guess we'll, we'll take a moment to highlight on this slide. This is the Brown Elementary School enrollment boundary right now this has actually um, been the enrollment boundary line since Polakitas opened um, but in the 2019 in 2019 so 1819 committee year effective the 2020 2021 school year so when Marcy hers opened this line went into effect this was intentionally drawn here through much discussion and planning and ultimately a vote of the committee and the board to establish this line for the middle school and high school levels. That created what we commonly refer to as a split feeder. So while kids on both sides of this line go to Brown Elementary, uh, students in this area go to DePoli DeMonte and students in this area go to Hers Galena. So we'll definitely talk more about that later, but I wanted to use this opportunity just to kind of provide some of that background. So this next slide represents the current capacities and projected enrollments prior to any further action. This blue line indicates the year that the new Rio Wrangler Elementary School, area elementary schools anticipated to open. So it's pretty obvious the schools that are in desperate need of overcrowding relief and the time at which we anticipate delivering them. Also noteworthy where Double Diamond's sitting today, really quite optimal from a utilization standpoint, a little bit of breathing room, but not underutilized and quite stable. So anyway, this is what it looks like now from an enrollment standpoint. So moving forward, we're on slide five now. This is the original attendance zone, originally proposed attendance zone. So we're, we're considering this still an option for consideration. This was the attendance zone that was depicted and debated in 2019 that ultimately led to the establishment of this middle school, high school boundary line but it also included this red dashed line proposing a new boundary line for the Rio Wrangler area future new elementary school. This would take this area, if you guys can see my cursor, sort of out of Polakitas and into the new Rio Wrangler area elementary school. It would take this area out of Brown and into a new Rio Wrangler Area Elementary School. It would make no changes to the high school or middle school boundary line. So again, uh, this was the originally proposed option. And the next slide is the impact data associated with that enrollment zone. 
So going into effect August 2023 for the 23-24 school year, you see a significant reduction in enrollment projection for Brown. Double Diamond is not impacted by this change, and so their numbers remain the same. And you can see a significant enrollment relief for Polakitis, although arguably not quite enough. And then you see a rather optimal utilization level for Rio Wrangler, the new elementary school at Rio Wrangler. So that's, that's what the numbers would look like with this enrollment zone. We showed this exact information um, in November and then went on to talk about another option. So on slide seven, we're presenting another option. And the main change here is that rather than heading south here on Rio Wrangler Parkway, so this is Steamboat Parkway right here and Rio Wrangler Parkway. And on the previous option, we headed south down Rio Wrangler Parkway and up around behind Demonte Ranch High School. So all of these guys stayed in Polakitas. Because Polakitas really didn't receive the overcrowding relief that we'd like to achieve with this project, we looked at this option, which instead of you know going left, we went or going right, we went left uh, north on Rio Wrangler Parkway here to a split between subdivisions in a large drainage way here. It then includes these neighborhoods in a change from Polakitas to Rio Wrangler Area Elementary School. That's the only change between options one and two. Again, this boundary line was not considered for adjustment in part because of its relatively new establishment. So this is the same information we presented last month. Just a little bit more clarity on exactly where we're proposing to draw that line. Again, Rio Wrangler, Steamboat, we're heading north and then cutting up between the subdivisions along a drainage way channel. These are very distinctly independent communities from a geographic standpoint, at least. No roadway connections. And then the next slide depicts this on an aerial, a major drainage way. That's where we would look to draw that uh, enrollment boundary line. And so with this option two, expanded proposed attendance zone, you see a slightly, the, the shift is basically more from Polakitas to Rio Wrangler. So a lower enrollment numbers at Polakitas versus option one and a slightly higher enrollment numbers at Rio Wrangler then option one, there's no change to the brown projections or impacts and no change still to double diamond either. You can see the balance between them and then ultimately Polakitas continuing to grow in population. This is in large part due to the projected impacts of daybreak. And as we talked about earlier, Polakitas would see still greater impacts to daybreak if we made those other adjustments, which to some degree are inevitable to be expected, right? So this is the end of the content that we have for presentation this evening. We've received a number of public comments. I'm sure we'll receive more, but I wanted to just take a couple of minutes to talk about uh, some of that context. All of you should have received that and hopefully had an opportunity to digest some of it. Um, you know, again, when it comes to projections and optimizing balance throughout neighborhoods, lots to consider, major geographic boundaries, interconnectivity of neighborhoods, frequency of rezoning, you know, there's subtle distinctions that um, make precise balances often, uh, I don't know, suboptimal, right? We don't want to chase, it's not going to be completely equally distributed. We feel that this option is a very good balance between even distribution, appropriate uh, utilization levels, and 
uh, minimize disruption. The more people that we impact with a change, uh, generally we believe to be a, a lower quality solution. We want to minimize disruption to families. At least that's a factor that we consider. So taking that into consideration, taking all of that into consideration is really how we arrived at this option too. Now that said, I wanted to particularly talk about some of these communities on the south side of Rio Wrangler Parkway. So this is Rio Wrangler Parkway, and you can see a number of communities between Devonny Ranch High School, Veterans Parkway, which is down here, and uh, some of these other communities. So these guys here are currently zoned for uh, Polakitas and are being proposed to be zoned for the new Rio Wrangler Elementary School. These guys here are also, well, pardon me, what connects these communities is that they have access, they, they front Rio Wrangler Parkway. Um, and in both cases, they're being proposed to be zoned for the new elementary school at Rio Wrangler. This is Veterans Parkway, so it's a much more significant geographic boundary. There's a couple of neighborhoods kind of uh, off, off of the corner here. They're on the east side of Veterans Parkway. They're being proposed to go to the new elementary school at Rio Wrangler, and then this large established community on the west side of Veterans Parkway, currently zoned for Brown, and being proposed to be zoned for Rio Wrangler Parkway. I'm gonna look at, I'm just shift to a Google image for those that are watching live. It might give a little bit better understanding than that colored map. Again, you can see, you know, somewhat three or four distinct communities here or subdivisions that, you know, like I said, have primary, if not exclusive access to and from Rio Wrangler Parkway. They're on the opposite side of Rio Wrangler Parkway. They're being proposed to be zoned for this school. They're currently zoned for Brown here, Polakitas up here. We're proposing to bring them to the new elementary school site here. This is another community that I think warrants discussion. They're currently zoned for Brown. You can see how they front both Veterans and Rio Wrangler Parkway. They're currently zoned for Brown. We're proposing that they be zoned for Rio Wrangler Parkway as well. This community here, I'm, I'm trying to come up with cute nicknames for them all. That's kind of my thing. I don't know how you say this. Sesenia. This Sesenia community is kind of in between. Doesn't have access directly to Rio Wrangler Parkway except for this drainage way path generally fronts off of Veterans Parkway. It is proposed to be zoned for Rio Wrangler Area Elementary School. It's currently zoned for Brown Elementary School. And then this area, what was this, Pescero Way, Pescero Way, on the opposite side of Veterans, currently zoned for Brown, proposed to be zoned for Rio Elementary School. Again, I really wanted to zoom in on this and let everybody kind of digest this. These have come up in public comment as areas of question. Back to the um, proposed zoning and enrollments. Now, hopefully this map looks a little more clear to you. Pescaro, Sassania, in this little triangle portion right off of Veterans and the rest of these subdivisions that front off of Rio Parkway. And you can see all of those are proposed to be zoned to the new Rio Wrangler Area Elementary School. Some go to Polakitas currently, some go to Brown currently. So I think there's um, some questions or discussion about potentially revising some of these neighborhoods to remain in Brown. And I think there's some pros and cons to that that I'd like the discussion to suss through, but I would like to at least add that you know that historically we've been really diligent to keep those vertical alignments together so right now uh 
what's proposed, these neighborhoods would go to Rio Wrangler Elementary School, and then in this orange would go to DePoli and DeMonte. These areas proposed to re remain in brown would go brown, Marcy Hers, and Galena. So any revisions to the elementary school level boundaries, I think would want to maintain that vertical alignment. If you're going to Brown, you're gonna, I, I would recommend that we also adjust the middle school and high school boundaries to keep those verticals aligned. Um, lots of different ways that, that uh, we could go with this, um, but I just wanted to highlight those communities because I think they all have different access points and transportation concerns and pros and cons that sort of differentiate one from another. And then also highlight that desire to maintain vertical alignment between elementary, middle and high schools and, and what might want to change if we came up with any alternative scenarios. So that's that, um, you know, circle it back with, hey, the, those changes may affect a greater number of total people um, in the pursuit. So there's a variety of factors that you kind of have to weigh um, when you're determining what might be the best solution. And the best solution maybe isn't always dictated by the spreadsheet, right? That's what this committee's for and that's what public comment's for. So that's kind of the additional context that I wanted to add to the content that we had. And uh, that's the end of my presentation. Thanks a lot. Thank you as always, Adam. Questions or comments from the committee? So this is Kristen DeHaan for the record. Um, will there be uh, the opportunity for parents who have kids at multiple schools to be grandfathered into whichever school they are currently at? Hi, Lauren Ford, staff liaison for the Zoning Advisory Committee. Um, yes, so grandfather variances are definite and it's for the um, highest grade level. So if we were to rezone those students from Brown, they would have a grandfather variance for their fifth grade um, to be at Brown. If they do have a sibling, we do allow the sibling to stay for the one year. Then at the second year, they would be zoned at their new Rio Elementary School. Um, so yes, we do have that grandfather variance in place. They have to fill out the form, submit it to the school, um, but it's a definite acceptance. Christy, yes, so for the record, <clears throat> I just had a question. Are any of the, I think you called it Cesario and Pescaro, I'm sorry if I'm slaughtering those names, are any of those students being bused currently to Brown or are they all within the walk distance? I, I noticed that they have to cross over veterans, but are we talking new busing that's going from those areas that would then go to Rio Wrangler or are there any of these areas that are not bused that are gonna be bused or vice versa? Uh, this is Adam, Christine. seriously. Oh, sorry, Adam. Go ahead. Go ahead. No way. I want Christine to take this one. I was going to. She's waiting for me. Um, the students across veterans in that particular neighborhood do definitely have um, a bus currently. Uh, I know many of the families do walk and bike, but the bus is available for the neighborhood across. So on the western side of veterans, they do have a bus. And we did get quite a few uh, public comments about the eastern side of veterans those few neighborhoods several of them use walking paths to um, to walk to school but i don't believe they would be in the um, mileage requirement for either school they're they're pretty equidistant between the two schools um, so that that would be something transportation would have to chime in on um, whether or not they'd be provided transportation I don't have anything to add specific to that. I agree. Crossing veterans has been a consistent transportation trigger. Um, and so that's almost certain to continue. There are a tremendous path interconnectivity throughout these communities, both uh, to the north and to the south, whether you're trying to get to the new elementary school or Brown elementary school. 
um, and the crossing of uh, Rio Wrangler Parkway would not carry the same similar trigger as the crossing of uh, Veterans Parkway. This is Christine Hull again. Um, I just I would really love to see some maps with some lines drawn a little more to the north and seeing what the numbers would look like at Brown for these few communities that we did hear quite a bit of public comment. Um, and I'm sure they're in the, the audience. I, I did attend both Polakitas and uh, Brown's PTO meetings recently. And there's a, a lot of interest for maybe seeing a different map where the, the line is drawn a little more to the north and the southern border is bumped up just a bit. Um, so I would really like to see the numbers for that. And I know, Adam, I know you guys do such a great job at looking at all of the possibilities, but knowing that Talis Valley slash Daybreak is coming, there I do have some, some concerns about Polakitis um, and the other schools more to the north continuing to be overcrowded and their facilities being overextended. So um, I'm sure we'll continue to hear some more public comment here shortly about it, but I personally would really like to see um, what it would look like if those boundaries got bumped up just a bit to the north. So just for the purpose of clarifying and hopefully for the audience, everybody, I'm gonna try Christine to encircle, when you're saying to the north, suggesting pulling this boundary up to yes. the north a little bit and mm -hmm. this boundary also up to the north a little bit yeah with those couple of neighborhoods that we've heard um from quite a few parents that um they, they would like to see what if it's possible for them to stay at brown because they're pretty equidistant between rio wrangler and brown and then that would provide a little more space to move that northern boundary line even more north um perhaps knowing that there's also some additional growth still happening in those areas, which I know that you put all those numbers in already, um, which I very much appreciate. So um, I, I just would, if you've already investigated that, I'd, I'd love to hear, you know, why that didn't seem like the, the best possible solution. I think so the, the biggest factor that has uh, kept those options from this evening's presentation uh, is the fact that adjusting this boundary here to the north uh, impacts the middle school and high school line. Right, would be accompanied with a middle school and high school boundary line adjustment. Um, but, you know, as, as you guys discuss it, these are certainly options that we, we can analyze and bring forward for future consideration. And I know that you did not um, have it in the presentation, but just for the sake of, of knowledge, the, the space at Galena and Marcy Hers is it, there. Neither of those schools are overcrowded. So if if that was to be um, something we wanted to discuss, we're not adding, we're not making a school even more overcrowded with those two schools. Is that correct? No, I appreciate the opportunity to comment on that. We, we definitely have capacity at Marcy Hers and Galena. Um, I did see some public comment related to uh, their comparisons. It's, I think, noteworthy that DePoli and Hers are almost identically populated. Um, a move like this actually wouldn't have a significant number of students being impacted, but certainly more students would be impacted by these options than what is currently presented, but um, we could easily analyze those and present them for discussion. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Adriana Publico, for the record, if we do um, continue this item to the future and have more items moving forward, I would be interested in seeing the transportation implications of those different options because I think that's where it might get tricky. This is Tyler Rogers for the record. I'd like to echo both Christine and Adriana on the, 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 on, on the points about transportation as well as sort of looking at the, the maps. I think we had a very specific one come in from public comment proposing a, a change to that line 
at the bottom if there's a neighborhood of concern and hopefully we hear from it tonight but i'd be curious to see that specific impact from what was shared because there's a lot of thought put into it from uh the school because i think it came from the pta um just to be clear that the option two and option one both address the split peer issue i think that there's a question public comment that there was concerns about that but both options on the table solve that right that's correct okay and then just so i'm understanding the map correctly if uh the marcy hers and galena topic if the line was moved the bottom line that's currently dashed red if that was moved north those the, the feeder those would feed into marcy hers and galena that's what we would propose yes okay you know i mean the transportation goes a lot of different directions um it's noteworthy um you know these students would are currently in the walk zone for say demonte ranch high school um would be in the bus zone for galena high school it wouldn't trigger an additional bus route necessarily um but it would change some you know it's kind of like do you want to get rezoned from brown into rio wrangler and stay in depoli demani or do you want to stay in brown and get rezoned into hers galena that's a high level uh, uh assessment of of what's up for discussion here um you know back to this one we've heard different comments about some of these communities like right here with the the access to real wrangler and, and the safe crossings here the the crosswalks that exist here versus all the way down here or even across veterans um I don't know if the committee, you know, as you discussed, I just wanted to try to tease out any feedback that we can about uh, specific preferences that might be coming to mind about making, because there's a lot of different ways that you could draw these lines, a lot. Um, and we, we've explored an, a handful of them, um, but I'd really like to take this opportunity to get as much feedback uh, that we can before we, we present any new options. Similarly with up here, this is Steamboat Parkway. Um, right here. And so pulling this line to the north, right? It's already going up here. I'll tell you right now, we're gonna be looking in right here that this community might be pulled to the south into Rio versus staying on steamboat and staying in Polakitas. Stuff like that. If anybody's familiar with this community, if any context, any preferences, any public comment would be helpful um, for us to bring back uh, options that are most desired. Thank you. Um, Lauren Rushing, that community is all apartment complexes, a lot of kids. Um, so I, I am very interested if, if this issue does continue to see how the new lines would break up neighborhoods, how they would split um, any existing communities that are currently going the same route. I think it's a fair ask that, especially after we get a couple of comments, to try to give you, Adam, specific guidance of where to draw these lines. So I personally would like to try to get there tonight if we're not going to take action to give you more specific guidance of at the end of this evening to get there. I have one last question, which is we talked again about this being a very high growth and development area of, of Reno. Uh, can you on this map, like, are there still a lot of areas that are, you, you said you factored in plan and known developments, but what is the likelihood of, of more of this stuff getting developed and we're going to have the same issue with overcrowding given there is still land to be developed in this part of town and how should we be sort of factoring in that potential into these lines so the, the school district receives um, development applications from both city of spark city of reno and wash county for every single development application that's that's uh put through their review process for our opportunity to review and comment. We're also, uh, we subscribe to a quarterly analysis through the UNR Centers for Regional Study and all of that timing and uh, quantitative data related to growth and development is programmed into our 
enrollment growth forecasts. Um, suffice it to say that all known growth and development in this and all of our communities is incorporated into our uh, enrollment projections to the, the absolute best of our ability. Um, there's a bit more to it than that, but I really do feel confident stating that these projected enrollment numbers associated with these associated enrollment boundary changes are as accurate as they truly can be. Thank you. I mean, it's also, uh, I view this as a plus given there is sort of capacity in this model, given if there is future growth, there's sort of room as opposed to one school being really overloaded. Any other questions or comments from the committee before we take public comment? Yeah, Darren Fleck for the record. <clears throat> my my concern in looking at, because I think that's fantastic actually, is the idea that in everything we looked at just earlier in regarding the push, the quote push north, is, is the fact that there's no outlet for besides a new high school, which seems to be on the very last thing that might be built as opposed to the elementary school. Um, is there seems to be no outlet for Damani Ranch should those numbers boost, for example. And I know you, you've you worked them into this, but all the new apartment complexes along Steamboat um, and also off of Veterans, along with all the housing being cleared east of 580, um, just brings me a little concern. I totally understand and appreciate the idea of can putting everyone in, uh, having kids go to the same elementary, middle, and high school. My kids don't have that, and so I greatly appreciate it. Um, but I I worry about that lack of outlet for Damani Ranch High School, which I could see moving higher than expected with the impact and possibility of not getting a new high school in this area quick enough when you have an opportunity now to jump ahead a little bit and allow Brown um, Brown to keep its current area, stay, move it back, and I know it's a lot to ask, but move it back to, sorry, Galena and hers, and keep that where it is and allow DePoli to have some breathing room and Damani to have some breathing room just in case something snarls in the works when it comes to actually getting footprints on the ground for new schools uh, in the future. Thank you. Anything more? Okay, let's open it up for public comment. Who do we have in line? Pablo Navadaran. Good evening. So I think uh, we talked about all the few years to uh, create a Master's Middle School, create a New Zealand Master Middle School. And we did include the Baby Brown area, which is what we here the maps. And we did create a space for for Brown Elementary School. And I do see that I don't see this one need to be changed for the middle school, high school, for the Brown part. Or, or a parent decide to stay in Brown, this year stay in Brown. But from from my option, I think the this area of a uh, mainly Brown who current zone for Bopoli or the Monty Ranch High School should be rezoned to Grand Wanger and Mississippi School be, because and also because to keep a uh, further alignment going. And uh, I do know that this too. Area while we here, the current bus to Brown, and uh, a reason to Will Wangler, the current adjustment to over here, and then the current bus to Poly, maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure, but and the money, uh, we did do walk to the money. So if we bus to Galena, we could add a digital bus. So I think this one should be stay at Poly and the Poly the money one high school. And a reason to win when a master school. And I like the part. And the second part is uh, this one. I, I like the, the expanded maps uh, to keep it balanced over here. 
but it could like tear up the neighborhood, tear up the community, do what you buy the families. So I think the the first one is keep a we I think that the first one will be possible options, just in case, like if a poke, if you decide to stay at option one, like for a poke here, like a little overcrowded in the next few years, I think that we could build a new medicine school over here up to the north and the near future. So here are my opinions. Andrea Thompson. Hi, thank you guys so much for being here. I know as someone that's on a committee, it is not easy to be here and to volunteer time. So thanks for doing that. A couple of things is one, I really hope that we are hoping to make decisions that will less impact also in the future. You know, and if we think a decade from now, I will still have children in elementary school. So that is an impact. One major thing that I see mostly is that I think more kids need to go to Double Diamond. You know, if you look at all the projections, um, Double Diamond stays pretty comfortably in the 70%, which I think would be great if we could all be at that, but I don't think that's the case, especially given all the new homes that have been built in the area. Um, if we're looking at safety, I'm really wondering why Veterans Parkway has not been a consideration for a line between Pulakitas and Double Diamond. Um, you know, we've had a couple of representatives come, or at least one representative come to our PTO meeting, which we really appreciate, by the way, as a community to be transparent. Um, but I really hope that you as a committee are going to make decisions that are good for our committee or for our community and not just for one person on the committee, because that particular person said they would not vote for Veterans Parkway to be a line because they live in that community. And I know that this is really charged and I know that this can be really tough to say, I don't want to move my kid. But I see that Pulakitas is going to be completely stressed still in the future if we don't consider putting more kids at Double Diamond. Veterans Parkway is a very, very main thorough road. And I'm really actually surprised that um, we haven't considered that given that it's a major highway and people go very fast on it. And why are we busting kids across the street with when we could potentially be putting them in a safer situation and actually taking some of the strain off of Pulakitas. Um, so I really appreciate you're going to look at buses, transportation. I hope that you will make a good decision for the committee and not just because someone who lives on your lives in that community is on your committee. I know it can be hard to be biased, but or not to be biased because we all feel really passionate about our kids. Um, but I think we really need to consider some of those other lines so that we're not doing the same conversation five years from now and having to disrupt people all over again, right? So um, I think that's the only points that I have. So thank you guys so much for your time. I know that, you know, these are often late nights and it's not an easy thing to do. So thank you. Jessica Bordalo. Hi, I'm having my husband join me because I'm quite passionate about this um, subject. So something that we didn't talk about was right at that, um, right on the red dotted line where we're talking about the drainage ditch. My neighborhood is impacted by that. On one of these pages, a comment that um, actually I was not very pleased with was, there's no roadway connection between these neighborhoods. Um, that really shouldn't matter. When Rio Wrangler opens and extends behind um, Polakitas, that is going to make it so that our neighborhood has not even... Can you help me, please? <laughs> yes, yeah, so I think what she's trying to say is it is it in the future, I, that road will probably be built before the development comes. So there's going to be an avenue and an exit, or at least in our neighborhood behind the high school, you can get to pull Akitas from South Meadows when that gets put in. So that's what she was trying to say there. Yeah, and right now, the exit out of our neighborhood, we are right by Kids Life um, or Life Church. We turn right out of there right now. If we have to turn left, along with however many other parents have to turn left out of there, that's gonna create a huge safety concern. It's already an issue with parents trying to turn into kids life and us trying to leave the area we're blessed that we get to turn right to pull now um and i actually drove by the new 
elementary school site today, there's one way to turn left out of there. And that's another concern that I have. Um, and not to mention, I have a first grader over there and next year I will have a kindergartner along with all their little friends over there that will be starting kindergarten too. And we just started this great thing that Mr. Ngati did called DENS. And if we have to move our kids, you know, what is that going to do to morale? Um, we're, we're creating this community at our school and we're going to be, you know, my daughter's going to go into third grade and she's going to have to move to a new elementary school. That doesn't seem fair. Um, I know we get rezoned all the time, but we, our neighborhood in particular has been rezoned several times. We bought that house in 2015. 14. 14. 14. And we have been rezoned several times. We have been at Pleasant Valley when we first bought the house. We have been zoned for Brown. We have been zoned for Double Diamond. And my feeling, my passionate feeling about that is that needs to stop. We need to stay at Polokitas. Um, the main thing being the safety concern. It's turning left out of the our neighborhood and out of the new school is... Um, a hazard and like Andrea had said we really need to consider Veterans Parkway as a dividing line and having more kids go to Double Diamond that just makes sense with that being such a major road and I guess my time is up <laughs> okay thank you Amy Ozuna. Good evening, Amy Ozuna. Uh, I want to echo some of the comments that Jessica has made. We are also in a neighborhood impacted from going from option one to option two. And my main concern is also the safety of turning left out of our neighborhood. And one of the distinct things that makes us a little bit different than other neighborhoods that are maybe on Rio Rango is we're also pre we're prior to the high school. So we're also combating traffic going to and from the high school, trying to get out of our neighborhood. And there are no, there are no other options for us to go a different way to make a safer exit to get to the new school. So I think that makes our neighborhood a little bit unique in thinking that they could stay at Pulakitas given those right turns potential down the road that there would be a road that connects Rio Wrangler all the way around, which again gives us another safe route from our neighborhood um, into the Pulakis Elementary. And, uh, you know, other than that, obviously not wanting to be rezoned, we will have a third grader and a kindergartner also, and th those are just hard decisions to make. But my priority being wondering how safely we would get to a new school, combating all that traffic on Rio Wrangler. And, is there a safer option? Thank you. Valeria Larategi. Sorry if I messed your name up. Hello. Good evening, everybody. I am here. We sort of talked about this. I, we live in the neighborhood that is right in the very down corner that used to belong to Brown and is now going to be maybe um, zoned for the new Rio Wrangler. So my concern is that we live in there and there's a bike path that, yes, it does cross veterans. We do have to cross veterans. We get a bus. Um, but going to the new neighborhood, we wouldn't only have to cross veterans. We would have to cross veterans and Rio Wrangler. And Rio Wrangler is just as busy as veterans. So... My kids, well, right now they're small, so they take the bus, but if it, they were older, I wouldn't have a problem too much sending them or walking them to, to Brown because we know we've practiced that, but sending them crossing two major um, roads would, would make me not want to do that. That's on the one hand. So based on the numbers and the projections, I, I think there is a case to be made that Brown can keep one more neighborhood. So I know our PTO president sent an, sent an email with a proposal. Um, it looks like this. So instead, it's just that little one corner and, and the last neighborhood in the, in the southern side. 
Um, so we would cut that. It's people that normally walk because there's a back path that connects to brown. Um, that it's it's really hard to see there, but there is a back path that you can go from my neighborhood into the other neighborhood that goes ends up right in front of Brown. That's um, the one thing. So based on the numbers, we were thinking that there could be a case um, to be made to keep that one more neighborhood in Brown and move the lines north, like Christine said. The other thing is that a lot of us of the PTO committee from Brown lives in my neighborhood. So if you were to zone that out, Brown would end up with a much smaller PTO committee. And we've worked really hard. Um, I think we have a great school, the teachers, the uh, principal, it's amazing. We're a really good team. So cutting that neighborhood off would really break that. And I think it's in the best interest of the students of Brown, of all of them, to keep that committee together. And that's it. Jeffrey Morris. Thank you for your time. Um, I'm speaking in support of map two, the second option. Um, one of the factors I see in traveling veterans pretty often is Carrot is the only cross street between South Meadows and Steamboat. And the second line, that new line, not diminishing the opinions that were just expressed, it also seems that the exits to veterans tend to trend south and trend north directly along that line. And for transportation purposes, that would be my comment. Um, I have a second question, and I think that was addressed. The new apartments down at the circle and then those new houses on the west side of veterans, are they factored in to the growth for the new elementary and brown as opposed to Polakitas? That's it. Thank you. Krista Phillips. Hi, thank you so much. Um, so I also live in what was referred to as the Pescaro neighborhood. We are the really fun Southern Italian group. Um, <laughs> but, and then the one that was also called, I think, Siena or si whatever. But we were all, we all have Italian names in that neighborhood. And um, I do really support Valerie's point about having to cross two main streets. I have a son that's currently at DePoli and uh, two kids currently in second grade at Brown. So we do have a lot of heartstrings attached to Brown. I also want to just mention, I really respect what you guys have tried to do with creating that boundary to allow children to stay with the kids that they grew up with the whole time. So I understand that and I appreciate it because there was a lot of tears in my home when my friend got separated from his other friend <laughs> in middle school. So it does make a difference in the long run to keep those kids together. Um, that being said, I, am, I would really love to reconsider those two lower neighborhoods to remain at Brown. Um, there are those paths that do make easier and safer walkways for us as a family and to have that community time. My son did for the last year before COVID, we did allow him to ride his bike. And there is a path when you get to the Curdy Ranch, just south of our neighborhood, it is very safe. And so with our parental help to get him across the street, he was able to ride over to Brown park his bike and still have a very nice community feeling of going to school at Brown. And it is a feeling I would love for my smaller children once they get older to be able to do that as well. And it is those things that I love about Reno in general is to have those kind of neighborhoods 
And it's one of the things that I loved about my, I do, and I still do love about my neighborhood. Um, I realized that changing that may change where we go to middle school and high school. For your consideration, if this comes up at the next meeting, I would love to see a projection of if that does change, what do the middle school and high school numbers look like? Versus on here, we just have the elementary schools, which is fantastic and important. But if we're talking about that hard line, I think it's important to include the projections for middle and high school so that we know what the extent of our children's education will look like. And that's it. You guys are doing hard work. Thank you very much. There's no more in-person public comment, but the committee received emails from Joanne McGough, Colleen Murphy, Megan Dugan, Julie Kewayama, Jackie Johnston, Candace Kingsolver, Ansley Winter, Amber Rose Niebauer, Susan Pansky, Angie, and Laurel Balanchine Mochiko. I think on behalf of the committee, I want to say thank you to everyone that has invested time to come share your perspective with us because it's extremely valuable as we try to make these decisions, as well as everyone that submitted comments. So thank you as well to everyone that has come tonight. Um, with that, let's have a discussion on sort of where we're at and what we've heard. Lauren Rushing. It sounds like we need more information. We need more time. We need more facts um, and additional projections. I agree with uh, Adriana Publico for the record. I agree with Lauren um, and would like to see other options that include moving the southern border of the new school's boundaries, which would have middle school and high school implications. Um, and one of the, the opportunities there is that um, we could relieve some or maybe make some room at Damani and move some kids over to hers and Galena. I'm, I'm curious to see those numbers and what they look like. Um, I think there's um, a really good point about veterans and drawing the line there and taking a look at moving that vertical slice of neighborhoods um, just east of DePoli all the way down to where that curve of veterans matches up with the blue line and seeing what the numbers look like there, shifting some kids from Pulakitas over to Double Diamond. Christy Essa for the record. I also wanted to just verify um, somebody said that their house had been rezoned four times since 2014. I that just seems that just seems super excessive and, and very emotional <clears throat> for somebody to have their children be rezoned in that neighborhood four times. So I really wanted to, to look to see if we cannot rezone that area again, what the numbers would look like if we did that, because doing that to that particular neighborhood a fifth time just seems cruel and unusual. So I think it we, we it does behoove us. It sounds like we're pretty well aligned that we we don't no one wants to make a motion this evening that we need some more information. So I think it behooves us best to uh, enumerate to Adam and team the best details that we need. So I've heard a few. Um, so help me as I sort of summarize the the specific ideas that I've heard. Um, one is a, some sort of map that reflects uses Veterans Highway as a, a new boundary. Um, I don't know more specific than that, but it sounds like that's a pretty common ask. Um, another one would be to use the map proposed from uh, that was came through public comments that would specifically sort of carve back out the Brown community. Um, I think I'd be interested to see the specific impact of that, that visual. Um, the rezoning point, if indeed having some information about communities that have been rezoned multiple times to factor that in to another line. 
um, transportation came up. So some information about how transportation would play into these different maps. Um, what else did other folks hear in terms of potential boundaries? Uh, this is Amy Howe. Adriana had said moving the boundaries north for both. Does it does the, the proposed map from the Brown PTO reflect that or you do you have something else in mind? Uh, I don't have that map, so I'm not sure exactly what the Brown PTO proposed. It might have come in later today, but um, I think, yeah, I think it only has to be. I think that one only has to do with the southeast, southwest corner. And what Amy reminded me of is that if we're gonna take some families that we're thinking of going to the new school and keeping them at Brown instead, then it gives us some bandwidth on the other dashed, the top dashed red line to move that line upward. Or at least we'd like to see those options or something like that. Obviously, we want to keep the balance of utilization of the schools. That's what we really like about option two, right? Um, but maybe there are other ways to do that that impact families or fewer families or families in a way that's not so dangerous to their being able to get to and from school with safe crossings and being able to turn right instead of left at certain areas. We have no purview over signaled crossings or getting the city to add those, but um, so we can't really talk about that, but we can talk about different ways to draw these lines that might be um, less impactful to families. At the end of the day, especially to our newer committee members, um, no matter what we do, we can't make everybody happy, right? That's just not possible, but we can minimize the disruptions to families once we know what those disruptions could be. So I'd like to echo what Tyler said, is thank you for letting us know how these options impact your lives and your kids. Yeah, Polly Boardman, I agree with you, Adriana. I was going to mention that a lot of the changes that were being discussed were people wanting to pull back out of Rio Wrangler, and we have to keep in mind that there's a school there that we have to fill. I know that when we did the boundary straight down and we didn't use veterans, we talked about that a lot because I know that's of concern, but there's so many kids there, and we needed to get kids into Polakitis. So, I mean, I don't know if it's possible to move it over there just because we looked at those numbers and it just, like, you know, killed double diamond, but I mean, obviously Adam can look at that, but um, I guess, you know, I really appreciate hearing from people about turning left and where they go. I think that's really helpful, but I think it's going to be really tough because there's going to be always neighborhoods that we have already moved this whole area. We just keep moving. So I think it's going to be tough. With the turning left, um, where I live in the Spanish Springs area, we have one of those where you have to turn left and it is almost impossible when you're doing it during those elementary school times that would then make more of those kids be late to school, which is one of the things that I know Washoe County is working really hard not to have because we want our kids in school on time. Um, and that wasn't anything that I know about because I don't live around here. So yeah, I really appreciate that. And the having to cross two major roads, just imagining little kids doing that and even imagining watching high schoolers and middle schoolers prior to the moving of buses, watching them cross Vista makes me have heart palpitations. <laughs> so just the thought of having to do that twice is um, it's scary. Darren Fleck. Um, yeah, thank you for this and also um, breaking me in. But uh, I wanted to express just from my personal experience in watching Polakitas and um, uh, say Sky Ranch open at capacity and within a year or two have, have, have trailers when surrounding schools have empty classrooms it, it, it's really hard as a community member and a parent, and I know you guys do a ton, you have done a ton of work before I got um, uh, myself here, and will have to balance all those competing factors and not making everyone happy. Is this is simple idea that I I understand the aspects and I appreciate the comments regarding the 
the rapid growth we've had here and the cause for having to add new schools and everything like that and what it does. But it, it seems like we're creating our own problems if we don't take into account some safety valves, pressure valves with populations. And we, we work ourselves in when we know we have an opportunity at places like hers, to, uh, Galena, and I think that just kind of reinforces the idea if we want to keep those tracking uh, with the kids going to the same elementary, middle, and high school, um, to have the high school and middle school numbers associated with some of these plans, just in case um, we can kind of see what's going on. Um, in order to keep, once these houses and apartments are done, to keep it from from us having to go back and redo Polakitas because you know it's we're going to have this whole new area. If there's a little safety valve there, we can we can keep from moving Brown again. We can keep from moving Ring, Rio Wrangler again, and 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 give ourselves a little wiggle room. But I appreciate everything. I'm absolutely blown away by um, the work you guys do to put this together. So thank you. I'd like to maybe go around the horn on quite a number of comments and just add a little bit of context. I mean, first and foremost, I appreciate all this feedback from the public and from the committee. Um, you know, that's that's what this process is all about. Um, so just trying to cruise around the horn here with some of the points that I heard, you know, uh, Adriana, we were talking down here about uh, the public comment that was received in the map some of these communities, existing communities, the Italian street names that uh, are currently in Brown. Um, that particular public comment was not accompanied by a corresponding adjustment of this northern boundary line, but I think it begs to be considered in combination. So I think a couple variations on a scenario like that uh, would warrant presentation. So, you know, we have looked at that and we will look at that Again, they would be accompanied also by a corresponding middle and high school boundary line adjustment, um, but that's that's that. So as far as moving this northern boundary line uh, along off of Steamboat, the most obvious adjustment from my perspective, uh, limited analysis is gonna be these apartments that we just kind of highlighted previously. The rest of this community, it's rather, it appears to be rather difficult to find an obvious logical break within the community. So we're gonna probably look at this to possibly move this line over to veterans off a of steamboat and take this community into uh, the new elementary school zone. Again, in some combination of variations of options. Talking a little bit more about Veterans Parkway, this is an important discussion that we've been having since 2017, 2018, with the zoning of the new Polakitas. Um, I can tell you that Ms. Boardman's comments were her, she's a longtime member with a great memory. There's a ton of kids that live west of veterans, east of this boundary line in the Polakitas zone. And so uh, I'll tell you right now, taking the line straight down veterans and all these kids into double diamond, while it does make for a very valid comment, the numbers won't work. Um, but we'll look at some options uh, there for you guys to consider. And then always weighing you know, the, the number of students that are impacted. Those communities were historically zoned for double diamond. They were rezoned into Polakitas in 2019. And uh, what, we, what we'd be proposing is to rezone them back into Double Diamond, um, perhaps as soon as 2023. So weighing those factors, as well as just kind of the numbers that we're talking about. But Veterans Parkway is no joke. That is a totally valid consideration that we've wrestled with uh, and continue to wrestle with. Moving up here just a little bit, you know, um, Again, welcome to the Zoning Advisory Committee. We've got to draw the line somewhere. We tried really hard to find this drainage way and you know, appreciate that all communities are interconnected, but we're not drawing boundary lines right down the middle of streets where neighbors looking out across their driveways go to different schools. 
Um, I'm well aware of the traffic congestion issues associated with a couple of these intersections. I didn't know where Yeehaw Avenue was until this week, but um, uh, it's a thing. And when the high school is in action, in motion, it's a serious thing. I will at least note that these communities are in the bus zone or they receive transportation services uh, to elementary school currently and would almost certainly, uh, we have measured it before the meeting, also be uh, outside of the walk zone um, should they be rezoned into the new elementary school. So that's, I think my comments around the horn, I'm sure I missed something, but I just wanted to share a little bit about what I do know about the comments that have been presented. We're going to do analysis and try to distill, you know, you can get pretty carried away. Uh, we always try and balance a variety of options, but not to overwhelm because we do try to, you know, drive towards a decision. So I'll probably take three or four of these scenarios and maybe distill them down into maybe what we believe to be the best version of those scenarios. Some of them might be illustrated for the committee really just to demonstrate that they're fatally flawed, you know, and, and maybe we've already kind of looked at that and they're not presented here uh, because we already know that. Um, but others uh, are plausible and it's up for this committee to determine if the pros outweigh the cons versus what's already been presented. So we'll, we'll cook those up and we'll work with the chair and the vice chair maybe a little bit if we do have some questions. But I, again, I think this feedback has been super helpful and, and just the opportunity to have a conversation with the community is really what this is about too. Thanks. Thank um, you, Adam. Do you feel like you have any more questions of, of us to get clarity on those scenarios? I wanna make sure that we give you as specific of advice as we can. I don't have any questions at this time. And again, certainly if, if some sticking points arise, we'll consult with the chair and the vice chair in between meetings. Um, thinking about the busing, I mean, in a perfect, gorgeous world, we're gonna have more bus drivers next year and in the coming years. But right now, for middle and high school, they're having to go to their zoned elementary school, correct? To get bused, if they are getting bused? not in all areas there were certain areas that that happened in okay so for this area would that not be happening they would be bused from their home the busing with having the middle and high school students walk to their elementary school was due to the shortage of bus drivers we had currently right we can't project that in the future right um and we can't project like um, if transportation were to bring to the Board of Trustees other options. I can't project that in these discussions. Okay, because I was just thinking if if the students would have to walk to their school, to their, to their zoned elementary school that they had been bused to the previous year if they were in fifth grade, and now they're going into sixth grade. So if it were like this year, I was just wondering if that is something that would be considered because that could be challenging. So for these maps right now, um, the area where the dotted line is going up toward the north, if I get this correctly, they're in the walk zone for double for Damani Ranch High School. Um, when I look at the high school, because the high school walk zone is three miles, correct, Darren, right? Um, but if, if the students, if we were doing it right now and the students were being bused to Galena, they may have to walk to Brown Elementary School because that's where they were currently zoned this year, right? But um, I do know that in the Spanish Springs area, we had to do that. But for example, in the McQueen area, because of the distance and traffic, we did not in the whole area have them walk, but in parts, they did have to walk to some elementary schools. So it was just different areas depending on number of bus pickups in a shorter range.
Any more parting thoughts? Okay, so I think the guidance at this point is that we will move the the discussion and decision to the next uh, next meeting um, and expect some more information. So thank you, Adam, for agreeing to that. Uh, that closes out item 2.02 .02 on the agenda and brings us to uh, general Mr. Chair, public comment. Mr. Chair. Do we have any folks for general public comment this evening? Hello. Can everybody hear me? Hey Neil, we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, I would. I think you should make a motion to uh, bring the item back on 2.02. 2. At a Consid later agenda. What's that? You're saying we need a motion to move it to a, a, a future agenda. Yeah, I think you need a motion to move it to a future agenda because of two reasons. One, because it's an action item, and number two, as you gave. Uh, a lot of comments for Mr. Searcy to consider. So I would suggest a motion somewhere along the lines of uh, we move to um, continue item 2.02 .02 to the next meeting of the zoning committee consistent with our discussion herein. Awesome, Neil. Thanks for keeping us on the tracks. You bet. No problem. Adriana Publico, for the record, I move that the zoning advisory committee continues item 2.02 .02 to the next Zoning Advisory Committee meeting. Kristen DeHaan, for the record, I second. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to move item 2.02 .02 to a future agenda, future meeting. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those who opposed? Motion is passed. Okay, sure. thanks, Neil. Uh, that brings us again to public comment. Do we have any general public comment this evening? Pablo Nava Duran. Okay, so you guys talk about 2.02 .02 to the next meeting. Yes, sir. Sure. So I heard the talk about the 2.2 .2 about the, the like a little bit brown, oh, no, a little bit like queer wrangler who current zone, but potential zone queer wrangler they want to stay brown. That's fine. There could be reason to muster the Galen High School because. And I do know the capacity of the money was 91% with the for the daybreak. And I do know, and I want to talk about the labor shore on the bus shores and have negative impacts of a near war student because many of near war students are missing their school days because they don't want to take the bus or no one want to pick their well and stay home. So I want to add the M safely say that. For a 2.02, .02, like maybe try to like have include number of Poli in a Domain Wench High School, and a Domain Wench High School while Smithwich on it because in the next few years, since the labor shores are turning to worse, we need to rezone Smithwich I mean, School out of Domain Wench High School, more like a Wooster, Hug, or Spark High School. If a, if a if a Wooster High School is still like uh, under your eyes, I think like we could fit to the Smith Street to Wooster High School. But I, I don't know, I do not know what, what the potential look like for Hug or Spark Mill High School because because uh, I think that more likely the Hug Sparks High School because of a uh, Wooster High School community, we chat the New World community. But I think the reason to Hug or Spark that make a better much closer to the Monuments High School because many students would take the public presentation to Wild 12, uh, Wild 15 to Hawk High School, and then Wild 54 to Spark High School, or Wild 9 to our way to Tom Spark, or Wild to the Spark High School. Uh, so I think that we should consider that on a general part zero two on the Monuments High School with with or and without Smith Ridge on the woman number because. Next video said this one get worse, family. Yeah, we listen to this or South Middle, don't want the West family, Brown, poor kid family. But listen to this. So we the New World community over here, the Smithshire community, our current zone for the Monument High School, and then might have to rezone our the Monument High School. That correct under your that's for the Monument High School. So think about we concerned about the zoning advisory community. And thank you. For the pointing out for the safety of our concerns. So I really appreciate it. 
And I think the, for the Metro school, but for the Metro school, I think the first forward, no joke. You're correct. Thank you. Thank you. And no joke. And, uh, and then have a nice day. Thanks, Pablo. I really appreciate your engagement throughout all of these things. It's impressive and admirable. Any more public comment? The committee received email public comment from Savannah Fraley. Very good. Okay. That brings us to uh, item 3.02, the announcement of our next meeting, which will be February 17th, 2022, with a location to be determined, I assume. Do we know where it's going to be yet? We've, we just, yeah, likely to Poly Middle School. Okay. But when the, when the meeting's agenda is, we'll make sure uh, to publicly announce that. Great. Keep it in the community. Okay. With that, that brings us to item 3.02, the uh, adjournment of the meeting. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>